and I've got a presentation here about money, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. There are a number of different perspectives to take on this subject. Firstly, I will take a historical perspective of money. What happened before money was invented and why it was invented. I will also uh, look at what makes good money, the different objects that have served as money over time, how it has evolved throughout history, and some of the problems the monetary system has at present. Then I will talk about why Bitcoin was invented, how it works, how it tries to address some of those problems with money, and a brief history of Bitcoin to date. And then finally, I will talk about how you can go about obtaining Bitcoin for yourself and a short description of some of the other cryptocurrencies now available. First, we need to consider a time before money, trade through barter. And this often created the problem of double coincidence of wants. So we consider a situation where you've got a doctor who cannot produce their own food. They must find a farmer, somebody who specialises in producing food. Uh, that farmer must have the food the doctor wants and require health care. Uh, once they've done this, uh, the doctor and the farmer must negotiate rates at which medical care food are exchanged. They must do this for all other wants, uh, for example, plumbing services, uh, clothes, etc. Uh, but this could often make saving for the future difficult. Uh, some goods are perishable and hard to store, for example, strawberries. And this is likely to lead to a society where people would be more generalised in their skills and self-sufficient, i.e. you would grow your own crops, keep your own livestock and build your own home. Uh, this used to be the case in Europe during the Middle Ages and in some developing countries it's still the case where money isn't in wide circulation. So using money. The invention of money allowed the benefits of specialisation without the difficulty of barter. So we can imagine that the doctor will accept money in return for providing health care to the farmer. Uh, and then the farmer will accept money in return for providing food. And then others will also accept money for provision of other goods and services. And then this allows for a virtuous circle of trade. There are three major functions any object must serve if it is to be used as money. The first is unit of account. Uh, this is to identify the value of goods and services. Example, a car is worth £10,000 as opposed to 20,000 tonnes of tuna. Uh, the second would be store of value. Uh, you'd be able to hold on to the money and spend it in the future, i.e. savings. And it's not an option, of course, for perishable goods. For example, strawberries rot over time. And the third is medium of exchange. Universal acceptability has payment for goods and services. Other qualities of money are that it should be easy to carry around or portable. Lead bars could be money but they are not easy to carry. Durable. Uh, unlike strawberries, it should not perish over time. It, ideally, it should be in scarce supply. This will ensure its value remains stable over time. Uh, divisible. 
easily divided into different values so that transactions of varying amounts can be settled. You could not divide a cow into smaller units, at least not without killing it, and then it would be created into meat which is perishable over time. And fungible, uh, something that is interchangeable, returnable or easily replaced.